The most tragic times in the Bible. What happens when a king turns away from God? And how does this impact a nation? Jehoram's time as king set the stage for one of the saddest events in the Bible, the destruction of Jerusalem. This event wasn't just a military defeat. It represented a deep spiritual loss for the people of Judah. The destruction of the temple, described as, he burned the house of the Lord, 2 Kings chapter 25, verse 9, was not just the loss of a building, but the shattering of a nation's heart and soul. This story mixes together political schemes and a drop in religious devotion, resulting in an event that permanently altered Jewish history. The Fall of Jerusalem Following King Jehoram's rule, the fall of Jerusalem and the people being taken to Babylon is one of the saddest stories in the Bible. This wasn't just a big political disaster. It was also a deep religious and cultural problem for the people of Judah. It makes you wonder, how could such a special nation collapse so badly? Let's take a closer look at this emotional part of this story. The Kingdom Adrift The Kingdom of Judah, after Jehoram, saw a series of kings, some good, mostly bad. Notably, King Manasseh's reign was filled with idolatry and evil practices. The Bible was blunt about him. Manasseh led them astray, so that they did more evil than the nations the Lord had destroyed before the Israelites. 2 Kings chapter 21, verse 9 Doesn't this set a dark tone for what's to come? For a short while, King Josiah came into the picture. He's a king who wanted to improve Judah and bring back the worship of God. He fixed up the temple and refreshed their agreement with God. The Bible talks about the changes he made. There was no king before or after Josiah who turned to the Lord with all his heart, soul, and strength like he did. 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 25. But the question is, can just one good king really change the direction of an entire nation? Despite Josiah's efforts, the damage of previous years was too deep. God became very angry with Judah, and this started them on a path towards ruin. The Bible states, Nevertheless, the Lord did not turn away from the heat of his fierce anger. 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 26. The Rise of Babylon at Nebuchadnezzar Babylon was the emerging superpower at the time. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, began to gain a lot of power over Judah. Jehoiakim, the king of Judah then, ended up having to answer to him. But soon the situation got worse, and Judah was stuck in the middle of what Babylon and Egypt both wanted. It was like a tricky game of politics, but could Judah handle such a difficult situation? The situation reached a climax when Nebuchadnezzar laid siege to Jerusalem. After a prolonged and devastating siege, the city fell. The Bible describes the scene. He set fire to the temple of the Lord, the royal palace and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every important building he burned down. 2 Kings chapter 25, verse 9. Imagine watching your most sacred place burning. What could be more heart-wrenching? The exile to Babylon. The situation after was very bad. The walls of Jerusalem were destroyed. The valuable items from the temple were stolen. The worst part was that most of the people from Judah were taken away to Babylon leaving their land empty and ruined. The Bible says, Nebuzaradan, the commander of the guard, took into exile the people who were left in the city. 2 Kings chapter 25, verse 11. It makes you wonder, how is it possible that those who were considered God's people should deal with such a huge loss? A few people were left in Judah, and they were led by Gedaliah, 
whom the Babylonians had appointed as the governor of Judah after the destruction of the temple. However, this small bit of hope didn't last long because Gedaliah was killed. The few people left were scared of punishment from Babylon, so they ran away to Egypt. After Jerusalem's Fall After Jerusalem was destroyed and the people were taken away to Babylon, the people of Judah went through a big change. This part of their story is not just about being forced to leave their home, but it's also about looking deep inside themselves spiritually and eventually finding a way to start fresh. Think about it. What goes on for people who are ripped away from their homes? And how do they manage to find hope when everything seems so hopeless? Life in Babylonian Exile The people of Judah, now in Babylon, find themselves in a strange land, far from everything they knew and held dearly. Imagine the sense of loss and disorientation. The Bible really shows how sad they were in one of the Psalms. By the rivers of Babylon we sat down and cried as we thought of Jerusalem. Psalm chapter 137 verse 1. It makes you think, how can you sing your country songs when you're in a place that's not your home? The exile was not just a physical displacement, but a spiritual crisis. The temple, the very heart of Jewish worship and identity, was destroyed. How do they worship without a temple? How do they maintain their identity in a land that is not theirs? This period forces a deep rethinking of their relationship with God and their understanding of faith. During this hard time, the words of the prophets were really important. Prophets like Ezekiel and Jeremiah, who were among the exiles, brought messages of hope and restoration. Jeremiah wrote letters to the exiles saying, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 This was the major part of the biblical events that really shaped the history of the Israelites. Meanwhile, life in Babylon was not just about sorrow and longing. The exiles encountered new ideas and cultures. They learned new languages and skills. This exposure influences their thinking and ways of life. The Fall of Babylon The prophets speak of a time when the exiles will return to their homeland. Isaiah offered a vision of comfort and restoration. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 1 through 2. In a surprising twist in history, the Babylonian Empire was taken over by the Persian Empire, led by Cyrus the Great. Cyrus made a big decision. He let the people who had been taken away to Babylon go back to Jerusalem and rebuild their temple. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has appointed me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever there is among you of all his people, may his God be with him. Let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is God who is in Jerusalem. Ezra chapter 1 verses 2 through 3. Who would have thought something like this would happen? The return to Jerusalem was a gradual process, with various groups returning at different times. The rebuilding of the temple and the city walls, under leaders like Zerubbabel, Ezra, and Nehemiah, was a time of both joy and challenge. The returned exiles faced opposition, internal conflicts, and the daunting task of rebuilding from ruins but they also experienced the joy of renewal and the fulfillment of God's promise. 
Isn't it fascinating how rebuilding can be both a physical and a spiritual process? The period following the fall of Jerusalem is a mix of sorrow, hope, cultural exchange, and renewal. It's a story that goes beyond the physical destruction and rebuilding of a city. It's about the resilience of faith, the power of hope, and the unending quest for identity and belonging. This part of Judah's history shows us how people can survive tough times, change to fit new situations, and come out stronger and refreshed after really hard experiences. It's a powerful example of how a group of people can stay strong in spirit, holding tightly to their beliefs in God, no matter what happens. Rebuilding Jerusalem As we continue from the devastating fall of Jerusalem and the subsequent Babylonian exile, the narrative of the Israelites takes a turn towards rebuilding and renewal. But what does it really mean to rebuild not just a city, but a shattered identity and faith. When we talk about rebuilding after the fall of Jerusalem in the Bible, it's not just about putting bricks back together. It's much more than that. Imagine having everything that defines you, your home, your place of worship, your community, completely destroyed. That's what happened when Jerusalem fell. It wasn't just the city's walls that crumbled. It was also the identity and faith of the people. Rebuilding a shattered identity and faith means starting from the ground up, redefining who you are and what you believe in. For the people of Jerusalem, the temple wasn't just a building. It was the center of their faith, the place where they felt closest to God. When it was destroyed, it was as if their connection to God was broken. So rebuilding meant more than just physical construction. It meant re-establishing their traditions and practices in a completely new environment. For the Israelites, this was a huge challenge. They had to figure out how to maintain their faith and identity in a foreign land under foreign rule. And here's the remarkable part. They did it. They adapted. They found new ways to come together to remember and to worship. They kept their faith alive in their hearts and in their communities. It's like they were rebuilding their identity from the inside out. This period led to significant developments in Jewish religious life and thought, shaping the faith of the Israelites as we know it today. The Emotional Return Imagine the emotional journey back to Jerusalem. The land is familiar yet changed, a constant reminder of what was lost. Upon their return, one of the first acts of the Israelites was to rebuild the altar and restore the sacrifices, as described in Ezra chapter 3. It signifies a reconnection with their traditions and God. Rebuilding the temple again was a huge and difficult job. There were not only the actual building problems to deal with, but also people from nearby places who didn't want Jerusalem to be rebuilt and gave them a hard time. Despite all this, the Israelites kept going, encouraged by prophets like Haggai and Zechariah. The Bible shows how determined and strong they were in facing these challenges. The elders of the Jews continued to build and prosper under the preaching of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah. Ezra chapter 6 verse 14. The laying of the temple's foundation was a moment of mixed emotions. While many shouted for joy, the older priests, Levites and family heads who had seen the first temple, weeped aloud. The sound was so loud, it was heard far away. Ezra, Social and Religious Reforms He played crucial roles in this period. Ezra, a scribe and priest, brought with them a group of exiles and focused on the Law of Moses. When he got to Jerusalem, he started a big change in how they worshipped God. He didn't like that the Jews who came back were marrying people from the area, thinking it was bad for keeping their community's traditions pure. 
So, he encouraged everyone to promise again to follow the law of Moses and admit any wrongs they had done. Meanwhile, Nehemiah got everyone together to read their religious laws out loud, which really helped bring back a strong sense of their culture and beliefs. Nehemiah, rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. He served as the governor, focusing on rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Their leadership styles complemented each other. Ezra fostering religious and social reforms. Nehemiah focusing on physical and political rebuilding. Nehemiah faced significant opposition in his quest to rebuild Jerusalem's walls. Yet with determination and strategic organization, the walls were completed. This physical rebuilding symbolized a new chapter for Jerusalem, a city once again capable of defending itself with a restored sense of community and identity. The dedication of the walls of Jerusalem was a grand celebration, marked by processions, music, and great rejoicing. At the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, the Levites were sought out from where they lived and were brought to Jerusalem to celebrate joyfully the dedication with songs of thanksgiving and with the music of cymbals, harps, and lyres. Nehemiah chapter 12, verse 27. Rebuilding after the fall of Jerusalem teaches us about resilience and the power of faith. It shows that even when everything seems lost, there's always a way to start again, to rebuild, and to find hope in the most challenging circumstances. It's a story of a people who refuse to let their identity and faith be extinguished, no matter how hard things got. The second temple was built after the first fall of Jerusalem. This event was a significant milestone for the Israelites. The second temple stood for several centuries and underwent significant modifications and expansions, especially during the reign of Herod the Great. However, it too was eventually destroyed, this time by the Romans in 70 AD. Why is this story important? The story of King Jehoram and the fall of Jerusalem is more than just a historical account. It's a lesson of leadership, morality, and the consequences of our actions. So why does this story matter, and how is it relevant to us today? Number 1. The Dangers of Poor Leadership Jehoram's reign is a classic example of how a leader's moral and ethical choices can impact an entire nation. This isn't just about ancient politics. It's a timeless reminder. Think about it. How often do we see the ripple effects of decisions made by those in power? The story of Jehoram teaches us that leadership is a responsibility that extends beyond personal gain or agenda. It's about guiding people in a way that is just, ethical, and beneficial for all. Number two. The Consequences of Turning Away from God Jehoram's actions led to the weakening of his kingdom, both spiritually and politically. This concluded in the tragic fall of Jerusalem. It's an illustration of the adage, you reap what you sow. In our lives, when we stray from paths of integrity, compassion, and truth, aren't we also inviting chaos and hardship? The story serves as a warning. Our choices, especially those that deviate from moral principles, can have severe and far-reaching consequences. Number three, the impact of collective responsibility. The fall of Jerusalem wasn't just due to Jehoram's failures. It was also a result of the people's collective drift from their faith and values. This aspect of the story asks us to reflect on our own societal responsibilities. How do our actions as members of a community or nation contribute to the larger picture? Are we complicit in allowing wrongs to persist by our inaction or indifference? Number four, learning from history. One of the most powerful aspects of this story 
is its role in teaching us the importance of learning from history. The Bible through these narratives urges us not to repeat the mistakes of the past. In our modern world, filled with complex challenges, it is vital to look back at historical lessons to guide our decisions and actions today. Number five, resilience and hope. Despite the tragedy, the story of Jerusalem's fall is also about resilience and hope. The eventual return from exile and rebuilding of the city and the second temple serve as powerful symbols of recovery and renewal. This part of the narrative resonates with us today as a source of hope. No matter how devastating a situation may seem, there is always the potential for rebuilding and starting anew. Number six, the spiritual dimension. For those with religious or spiritual inclinations, this story has an added layer of significance. It illustrates the importance of faith, ethical living, and staying true to one's spiritual principles. It's a reminder that our spiritual health is just as important as our physical and material well-being. Conclusion The story of King Jehoram and the fall of Jerusalem teaches us a lot of things that are still important today. It's like a warning about how leaders should act, how our choices can have big effects, the need to take care of our community, and how strong and hopeful we can be even in tough times. It makes us think about how what we do affects not just us, but the people around us, and even those who will come after us. This story shows us that even if we make mistakes and deal with the negative things that come from them, there's always a chance to make things right and start again. This story, while ancient, resonates with timeless themes, power, faith, judgment, and hope. It reminds us that our actions and choices have consequences, sometimes reaching far beyond our immediate understanding. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, hearts heavy with the weight of history, reflecting on the tragic times in the Bible, particularly the reign of King Jehoram and the fall of Jerusalem. These stories, while ancient, resonate with timeless truths and lessons that speak into our lives even today. Lord, as we think about Jehoram, a king who strayed from your path, we are reminded of the importance of walking in your ways. We pray for the wisdom to learn from his mistakes, to choose the path of righteousness, and to seek your guidance in all we do. Help us, O oh God, to recognize the consequences of our actions, not just for ourselves, but for those around us and for generations to come. In the fall of Jerusalem, we see a people experiencing loss and pain. Father, we know that many among us today are facing their own personal Jerusalems, moments of loss, pain, and uncertainty. We pray for your comforting presence in their lives. May they feel your love and peace in the midst of their struggles. As the people of Judah were taken into exile, they faced a crisis of faith and identity. Lord, in our own times of trial, when we feel uprooted from our faith and uncertain about our identity, help us to hold fast to our faith in you. Teach us, as you taught them, to find new ways to connect with you and to maintain our spiritual identity, even in the most challenging circumstances. We are inspired by the resilience and endurance of your people. As they rebuilt their lives and their city, remind us that you are a God of restoration and renewal. In our own lives, when we face the task of rebuilding, be it our relationships, our careers, or our personal faith. Grant us the strength, perseverance, and hope we need to start afresh. We pray for those among us who, like the exiles returning to Jerusalem, 
are working to rebuild their lives. May they find encouragement and support within this community. Help us to be a source of strength and compassion to one another. Just